Our purpose here today is to uh, split this hive. There's, there, there's multiple reasons to do this. One is to prevent swarming. And it's been kind of a, a good spring for the girls to collect uh, the fruit tree pollen, the early blossoms, the dandelions. So their numbers are up. And these carnelians, their gentle is one of their advantages. One of their disadvantages is they tend to swarm uh, soon, easy. They're, they have a desire to go and colonize. Uh, I helped a, a friend in Hast or outside of Hastings with a hive that was ready to go. And we went in, grabbed a, a frame with queens on it, our queen cells developing, which was perfect. And I'm crossing my fingers hoping we have developing queen cells today. This hive was pretty active yesterday. And one of the uh, premonitory signs that they're gonna swarm is that they will cluster on the outside of the hive. They're not, they're not out harvesting. They've probably taken on some honey and are ready to take off if the queen decides it's time to go. So we hit it right on Dan's highs. I hope we do it the same thing today. Uh, I should make note of, uh, I'm a bit of a eccentric hermit and I, I did, I'm doing these little films because the cameraman has this insatiable lifelong curiosity, bless his heart. It's the kind of people I like. Uh, lifelong learners, lifelong teachers, conservationists, uh, preservationists, readers, that type of, of people. I like to spend time with and like to do these things with. So uh, a little recognition for Larry, our, our cameraman. Also, I think after the first episode, Larry maybe got bit by the bee bug. I, I liken it to, uh, uh, if you're if you were Trekkers, Star Trek Next, Next Generation had uh, episodes, of, well, two or three at least, with the Borg. Last year I got incorporated, captured and incorporated into the B-Borg, I call it, just like Captain Picard did. And so far I haven't been uh, uh, deprogrammed. I think Larry's a little bit infected too. <laughs> and, and it's kind of fun. And if this is film is right, I hope to infect a few more of you. Well, to start this split, again, we have the smoker. This smoke uh, makes them a little calmer. I try to use something with a calming effect in it too. I use walnut bark and uh, calms them down, calms us down a little bit. But what the smoke does is, is makes them load up on uh, honey, ready to move in case it's a real fire. We've, we've smoked the top or the bottom. We'll smoke the, the top a couple of puffs. That's the inner cover. That came off easy because I had pried it off yesterday, sort of curious on what was happening in here. This top smaller box is called a honey super. And, used, and there is also a queen excluder on this hive. That keeps the queen down in these two boxes. Uh, keeps the brood down in there and later on in the summer it's important that you restrict your honey frames to honey only and not brood and bee bread and all those other things that go along with the queen. I left extra honey on this hive over the winter. Must have had some premonition that it was going to be a tough winter and it was. Uh, some numbers to throw at you. The bees probably need, a hive needs about 60 pounds of honey left in the fall for them to get through the winter and then up until spring and then in February they will start gearing up and making brood again if they've got some honey and also pollen storage. This is a queen excluder, it sort of looks like a, some of the old car grills and there's some uh, burr comb in there that I was soon, just as soon wasn't there but Sometimes the bees do what they want to do. We don't have it perfect on the design. By the way, on design, this year, 2010, is the 200th anniversary of uh, Pastor uh, Langford, not Langford, Langstroth, who figured out all this critical distance on how much space you needed between the frames for them to not 
glue it together and then also to have room. And he was a minister. And his reasoning was, was a good humane one. So much of honey keep beekeeping had just been hollow logs that people would cut and keep going. But to harvest the honey, they destroy everything, sometimes even kill the bees. He wanted a way to, to uh, preserve that honey or preserve that honeycomb, not have to make the bees create new comb and be much gentler to the bees, a way to keep them alive. So we, we owe the hive design to Pastor Langstroth. There is a move this year to honor him with a postage stamp. So if, if you're so inclined, uh, write the post office and say, hey, we're on board with this Langstroth postage stamp. He did a good thing. Now what I want to do is move this whole top box over to that third spot. Eat your Wheaties, because these deep hive bodies weigh 90 pounds. I have, a, I have enraged a sentinel. When you're, when you're working the bees, one of the, some one of the hints are wear light colored clothes, wear, uh, don't wear wool, wear cotton, preferably Egyptian Pima, 800 thread count. No, I'm kidding. Um, but the, the, the lighter colored you are and the less hairy and the uh, more na natural fibers, the less they think you're a bear or someone that's going to do some damage. So uh, that's some of the prevention tips. Now let's try one more time. I'm going to try to move this whole, what do we call a deep brood box. It is nine and five eighths inches high. Over here to position three. I, I purposely try to keep track that the front of the hive there will be the front of the hive here. They, they are somewhat organized inside to that entranceway. Now that first hive box there has some rot in it and I'm going to get rid of it. So I will be removing the, the frames from that completely. And I'll be putting this new hive box as its replacement in that spot there. As you can see, I had to sort of put a patch in here. There was some rot along here. The entrance was, was too big and, and I believe this hive was losing some honey to robbers this spring. And that could contribute some to their short temper. Another thing that sets them off is crushing a bee that releases some of that same hormone that the sting does and that uh, makes the others think, well, this is a serious problem. I'm going to cheat here, folks, and taste a little honey.